Hello, and welcome to part one of 403 Forbidden's video tutorial on AutoIT Script. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over a little bit about how AutoIT works and how to script with it. <clears throat> First off, download and install AutoIT from www.autoitscript.com. When you get to that page on the left, there's going to be the downloads link. The latest version is version 3.3.0.0, which was released December 24th, 2008. To download AutoIT, just go here and hit Download AutoIT version 3. It comes with the editor, which is very useful, but as it says, it's a cut-down version. If you would like the full version, which I would definitely recommend, hit the button under it that says Download Editor. I'm not going to go over how to actually install it, because hopefully, if you're getting into scripting, you know how to install a program, because that's sort of a necessity. Anyway, once it's installed, you can right-click anywhere and say New AutoIT Version 3 Script. The extension for these AutoIT scripts is AU3. It's always good to remember. We're just going to call this script AutoIT Script. To open it, right-click it, and hit Edit Script. The SCITE editor will open up, in my case the full version of it, and it will have some comments here just about your script, the version, the author, which you would replace my name with your name, and the script function. These comments are very important when you're making a large, very advanced script, but for now, since we're just doing the tutorials, I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, the AutoIT help file is incredibly extensive. You can find it in the Start menu. It has a list of absolutely every function that AutoIT comes with, which is in excess of thousands. Each function, which is sort of like a command, has certain parameters. These parameters change the way that the function functions. For example, a very commonly used function and also a very powerful one, is message box. You notice as I type it in, it has recommendations about what you might be typing in. If you would like to use that, just hit enter, and it'll finish it and make the case correct. All parameters for a function are in parentheses. A box will pop up and tell you about some of how the function, um, how the function's parameters change the way the function works. The first one for this message box function is the flag. If you go into the AutoIT help, direct, help file, it will say down at the bottom about flags. What a flag is, is it changes the look and feel of the message box. If you have the flag be zero, there will just be an OK button. If you use a one, there will be an OK and cancel button, a two in abort, retry, and ignore button, so on and so forth. Then you can also change them to change the icon of the message box, which button is default, and then change some other miscellaneous parameters. Right now, we are just going to have the parameter for the flag be zero. All parameters are separated by a comma and a space. The next parameter is title, which will be in quotes. This is going to be the title of the message box when it comes up. We're just going to say, my first message box as the title. Separate it by a comma and a space, and now we have the text of the message box, which we're just going to make for fun. Your computer's overheating. When you're finished putting in parameters, you can you finish it with a parenthesis going the other way. Now, there is one other parameter, that actually two, that we can add, but I'll just go over one, the first one. It's timeout. What this is, is it's the number in seconds before the message box automatically closes. We're going to get into that in a sec. All right, so we have our function set up with all of the parameters it needs, the flag, the title, and the text. To run this, you can close it out and save it, go into the folder where the script is, right-click it, and hit Run Script. And there it is. The function message box comes up with the parameters that we specified. The flag, being zero, specifies that we just want there to be an OK button, which there is. 
the text of your computer's overheating, which there is, and the title of my first message box, which there is. You can also run the script by opening up the script and from within the script editor hitting F5. Same thing will happen. All right, let's try changing the flag to a one. If we look in the help documentation, a one will give us an OK and a cancel button. Let's try that and see if it works. Sure enough, there it is. We have an OK and a cancel button. Now, as you notice, whatever buttons we push, they won't do anything. We'll get into how to make message box buttons do things late in later tutorials. Let's experiment with the timeout parameter very quickly. Let's have the timeout be 4. After 4 seconds, the message box should go away. Let's try it. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep, there it goes. If we can change this number to 60, and it'll go, go away after a minute. Alright, now, let's experiment with a couple other flags. If we wanted to add certain flags together, say, have an OK and Cancel button, but also a stop sign icon, we simply add them together. I hope you know what 16 plus 1 is. It's 17. So let's try changing the flag to 17. When we run this, there's a stop sign icon, it makes a noise, and there's an OK and Cancel button. Oh, and since I forgot to take the timeout off, off, it goes away after four seconds. You can add all of these flags together in any kind of combination, combination to get the type of message box you want. Alright, thank you for watching 403 Forbidden's video tutorial on Autoice T scripting. We'll see you in the next one.